What's up, Backgammon fans? This is a video about a very cool setup and exhibition match between myself and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Backgammon Grandmaster. My name is Mark Olson. And a heavyweight international boxing champion, Senat Gashin Gan Gashi. And uh, Sen and I have been friends for some time now uh, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, he wanted to play me. He wanted the real experience. See how his backgammon skills fared against a, a real backgammon grandmaster. So he took his uh, supercar and drove from his hometown of Hamburg, Germany. I was playing with my friend's daughter, and she's six or seven years old. And she kept moving from the inside of the stack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like she chose a different one each time yeah. to move. <laughs> a little, <laughs> little story over the board there. Yeah, he, he drove up from Hamburg to Copenhagen to yeah. play me uh, in some matches. We actually played two seven point matches before this one, but the camera setup didn't really work. So uh, this is match three, and I think I won both the two first matches. So let's see. Let's see how he plays. He made a, an error here in the in the second move of the game with 2-1, but not a big one. No blunder so far. This is a fun one because I made a small mistake here. It is just better to make the five point. And I guess it's because I'm stripping my midpoint. Usually you want to make the five point rather than the seven, but there were some merits to the seven point here. Okay, then I roll a perfect 4-2. Putting him on the bar, the race is very close. Look at that 11 point now, how it blocks his back checker from running out. And now it serves as active builders. Oh, he made a blunder there. That was not a good play, seven to one. That was a wrong idea. You don't want to bury checkers. At least he could have hit me with eight to two. That would have taken away half of my roll, a tempo hit. But the best play was just 13 to nine, uh, 7. And now I'm think I'm considering doubling here actually. I'm counting the pips and then I realize that the pips is not quite in my favor, but I do have huge threats. I wonder if whether I missed a cube here here. I might have missed a cube. And then I rolled the perfecta double aces. I think I'm just gonna slot the prime. Oh yeah, I missed a big cube here. I wonder why I didn't double. <laughs> I mean, I see it now, and I'm a little bit surprised about my own decision there. It seemed rather obvious with a huge threats lurking that you need to double there. Even though, okay, now it's too good to double. That I quickly realize, and that's another perfecta. I can step up, and I can just close the six prime. Now Senat is in trouble. If you guys don't know Senat, I suggest you go to YouTube and check out some of his boxing highlight reel. He is pretty ferocious as a as a boxer, boxing athlete. So uh, yeah, strong guy. But this is not boxing. This is backgammon. It's a mind game, luckily enough. So here I got him trapped behind my six prime. That's quite nice. aces so in this part of the game my strategy is simply just to get my six prime rolled in one point at a time it's difficult to make blunders here as long as I don't break my six prime uh, okay f six to one looks a little bit weird to me playing six to one for him okay look here we go that's my strategy I just roll my prime one pip at a time forward and there's no risk to getting hit because I would just re-enter and yeah, not <laughs> I'm not risking getting counter primed here, so there's no risk at all. Yeah, that looks nice. Now I can cover with a six or a five without breaking a six prime. Rolling a six is good for him because that's the same as rolling zero. There I just roll the prime and it looks about right. Yeah, so so far the only mistake I did was I failed to double when I had huge threats. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed about myself there. The threats were, were enormous. When you have big threats like this, it's usually a good time to double. But somehow I 
got confused over the board here. Maybe I counted the race and I realized I was down a couple of pips and maybe I was thinking that I needed to have a bit of a race lead in order to have a cube since the cube was rather early but the threat of making the prime there was just too great if I could make the five coin in his face which I did with double one and look at this one I'm just on the bar but that's not a problem at all we've got Peter Halberg former backgammon world championship in the background you can see it up in the top right corner I believe it was 2002 or 2003 that Peter Halberg won the backgammon world championship Pretty cool setup here. We're playing in the old Absalon Church in Denmark. It's a church that's been renovated in order to have social events. And now it's a it's a restaurant and cafe as well. And it's a famous backgammon location in my home city of Copenhagen. I don't even live in Copenhagen anymore. I was just back for the summer. And uh, seeing it. Uh, hook, uh, looked me up on Instagram and we were texting back back and forth and then <laughs> eventually he he was uh, yeah he he talked himself into uh, driving up to Copenhagen to play against against me in this and I think we're actually also playing 50 euro a match here just to make matters worse or better okay so this is like the ultimate back in position here I got him trapped behind my six prime it's almost impossible to lose this position. He has like 3% winning chances or something like this. Maybe 4. Rolling the prime. And he has a crunched front position. That's why it's basically impossible for him to win. Even though he's actually ahead 41 pips here. <laughs> he's still in a bad shape because I'm going to close him out. I'm just going to play flexible here. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to close him out and... Oh yeah, the cube is actually in the middle, so I can I can just cube him out here. I think I'm making a s tiny error here by playing too good. Because I could actually have rolled a double six or something to left leave a shot. Oh, there's a double six. Okay. So I should have probably just doubled there, even though there's a microscopic chance of winning a gammon. Well, is it... I'm not sure here if this is a double, if it is too good to double or not. No, it's not too good to double. Maybe I'm. Oh, I even say it out loud there. I think I just missed a cube. <laughs> okay, now it's too good to double. Now there's no risk. I I guess I was just not a hundred percent concentrated at that uh, particular situation. Now it's now it's way too good. Now I could actually win a gammon. Let's see if I get lucky. Oh, that's one. Peel them off. Double five, that saves the gammon. I think I'm just gonna cube. Yeah, see that drops. Long game to win one point. Yeah, I win one point. That was my fault. I should have won at least two points here if I cubed correctly when I had my big threats. There are a ton of market losers there. I failed. So Senat actually is a very, very strong amateur player uh, of backgammon. And uh, he's been. Uh, He's been beating his friends for a long time and he's been <laughs> playing on Galaxy and all. So now he felt the time was right to test his skills against a stronger opponent. And my overall impression was that he actually played quite well. Uh, he sees the moves fast, so he's de he definitely has experience. Oh wow, look at this roll. That was a joker, that double five. What about the last five here? I think I need to come out to create connectivity with the back checkers. So which one do you come out with here? I still have con connection between my two checkers. I think this one has slightly higher connection, but I do duplicate my own force a bit. Yeah, that was a mistake. Ha, it's funny how you can see uh, how you can see mistakes that you made. You know, past past tense mark making some mistakes. Oh yeah, that was the cube. Okay, he took that fast. He didn't waste a second on his time bank. Uh, good take though. Good, very good take. That was not a completely easy decision here. Very good take from Sinat. He wasn't a scared player at all. Oh, that's a fan. That's not good. Six, five. 
can blitz attack or I can play like this. And as we can see from the XG analysis, the two moves are very close in value. I choose the best one, which is more of a priming style move rather than going for the blitz. Just because I have a prime formation here, I don't really have a blitz formation. Adjusting the cube, we're playing on the Neptune board here, the original Neptune board. Limited edition, only 50 boards were created of this exact model. The first ever Galaxy branded Bagamon board. 5-3, that's a good shot. I can just I can just hit loose and fight for the next point in my prime. Very standard, there's very little risk here. He actually rolls one of his best rolls here because he can hit and cover, but still it's not a big deal. Look, I'm still a 74% favorite. Wow, look at this. I'm gonna just go crazy here. And what about the last five? So apparently XG wants to play this one. Wow, I, I see it. This is more offensive. Wow, that's a, I mean, <laughs> that's a good play. <laughs> I'm praising my my past tense self here. That was a good play I just made. I realized that I had to squeeze my position here to the fullest. I want to when I have a strong edge, I can push it to get into an even stronger position. So I just break my midpoint and slot the slot to the six prime. Oh, look at this double four! It's interesting because I could blitz here. I could double point shift. That sure looks tempting, but you give up your prime if you do so. I agree. I'm talking out loud over the board. I like my logic here. And I'm even thinking out loud while I'm playing. <laughs> nice move. Classic uh, Santa Lila style move. That's right, I'm even sharing all my secrets here while I'm playing <laughs> switching from the priming game plan into the blitzing game plan so the blitz attack is when you just hit your opponent and make inner board points and put them on the bar and try to go for the closeout and in a blitz attack you don't care much about purity which is to make your priming points in the right order you're not trying to block or prime your opponent you're trying to just keep it on the bar run home with your checkers and try to win the game yeah, it's better to just come out here. I can see we just lost one of the cameras. Oh, and there's back. That came back. Yeah, this is wrong. Uh, I guess I'm getting a little greedy here. I want that extra shot on the blot on his 8 point, but it's too much. It's better to just run and don't bury checkers. There's a big loss of burying a checker on the three point here because you haven't closed the five and the and the six point. Good play. Good play, Mark. Again, it's a little weird to pr praise your own moves, but there is uncertainty in backgammon decisions, you know. It's not like just because I'm the one who played this game that I would simply find the same moves every time I see the positions. And now it's been a couple of months since since I played this match, so I don't remember what I moved for the most part. So it's actually a kind of like a novel experience with regards to this match for me as well. That's an awkward roll, huh? One, two, I agree. That's the wrong one, apparently. That's not the right one. This looks natural, but apparently there was a better play out there. I'm not sure which one it was. I think uh, Extreme Gammon is going to book me for a small error here. No, apparently not. It was okay. 5-3. Okay, coming down. And then you just come come home with the 3 as well. There we go. And now I'm not only winning a Gammon here. I'm, also, uh, not, I'm not just going for the Gammon. I'm also just winning the game almost every time now because of the the high pip lead. Look, I'm a 94% favorite here according to Extreme Gammon if I play 13 to 8, which I do. Good play. I'm maximizing my builders here with uh, without leaving any shots. 
Six five, that's a fun one. So now do I get greedy? Do I want that second checker on the bar? Huh. I don't hmm, I don't know man. I don't know. Okay, so you do have to hit. So let's see if I can figure this one out over the board. Oh, that was my Instagram tag, by the way. Mark Olson 10. And uh, you should follow Sinat on Instagram as well. I think he's got like a million or two million followers on Instagram. Something crazy like this. He's got a, an amazing uh, Instagram account, actually. Always posting super cool stuff. So you gotta follow Sinat. Look at this. I'm counting the numbers here I'm trying to get a grasp of it haha <laughs> so I realized that I'm leaving shots anyway so I'm getting a discount on the downside and there is a huge upside here in, in with regards to gammons look I'm winning 20% more gammons good play I'm happy satisfied with my oh Six five, but I figured it out over the board. No, I gotta something. So backgammon is not just about pattern recognition. Oh wow, look at this five three Joker. It's not just about recognizing the patterns and knowing the strategies in all positions. You have to be able to figure out the tactics as well. It's a tactical game. That was a pretty horrible fan from Sinat's side there. So now I'm gonna put this. Two checkers on the bar. The question is, which one of them am I hitting? That's the best play, according to Extreme Gammon. Yeah, you want to minimize his contact value, so you prefer that he comes in with a six rather than a five. That's a lot easier to get past an anger there in the six point. Uh huh. And just play it safe. That's nice. Leaving four shots out of 36 here. Five, one, six, one. Okay, good instincts there by Sinat coming in on the, on the 5 to increase contact value. Wow, look at this. Rolling like a champ. Not leaving anything. Now he should just save the gammon. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's not a good... The, the last three aces there, they could have been used better. But it's not a big deal. Sinat is trying to save the G. So he wants to take his checkers into the high points of his inner board, preferably just a six point like he does there, that's okay. So far Sinat is playing eight and a half in uh, PR, in performance rating or his error rate, and that's actually pretty good. So he's uh, playing quite well. That's like a strong, interme even an advanced player I would say, that's like advanced player level. And I'm playing like a two and a half, which is world class level. So I'm happy so far. 2.4 versus 8. And this is a racing position, so it's very easy to make moves here. And uh, therefore, our error rate is going to decrease a bit because the error rate is the total equity lost by bad decisions divided by the total number of decisions. So here we're getting more decisions and we're not making errors. So our PR is gonna go down a bit, which is always nice for <laughs> doesn't really change much. Hey Instagram tag Mark Olson ten. Remember to follow. I have a ten. Wow. That was a bad roll. And remember to to uh, to like the video as well, right? On YouTube here. You tell the YouTube algorithm that you like this video to help spread the backgammon content to the world. We've got the take point scoreboard with the blue colors <laughs> and little COVID mask under the iPhone there. 6-5. That's a great start. Oh, I don't... Is he doubling? Oh, he's, he's doubling. <laughs> okay. Wow, you haven't even spent more than uh, anything from your time bank. <laughs> you have 12 seconds per move. I just point out uh, that he hasn't spent a single second on his time bank yet. That's actually impressive. You know, that shows he's experienced and he knows how to move fast. But doubling in the very first uh, roll here uh, is, is not a good idea. Uh, he, he's desperate, but not that desperate. Now he uh, he's never going to get any fold equity out of me. He's never going to send a cube where I'm going to drop and... 
yeah, it's just the cube is just dead now, sitting with me. That's very very comfortable if your opponent does that to you. You don't want to give your opponent easy decisions with the cube. Then you're doing something wrong. Wow, double three. It looks like I'm just gonna crush him here. He made a couple of mistakes uh, with the back checkers here. Not too easy though. You know he's uh, slightly down in the race and he wanna maximize contact value. The first mistake was just running all the way with six five. I think he should just split to the bar point to the eighteen point. I was confusing myself here. Um, I think uh, he caught me off guard with that uh, first or second roll double. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking whether I should double or not. And then I looked at the score and then I realized after a while, hey, the score is 5 zero to 7 and I'm holding the 2 cube. It's even illegal for me to <laughs> redouble to 4 and why on earth would I do that? Okay, Sinat, are you sure you want to run here? Now you need to count the pips. You need to. Okay, he didn't count the pips, but his intuition was strong because he's actually up a pip. It's, so I have a slight advantage here given that I have the roll. And that double three is huge. But uh, his best move was definitely to run all the way with double five because it's better to just have a slightly losing race. Ah, look at this. Double sixes. It's better to just have a slight slightly losing race rather than having one man back that can get blitz attacked so he made a good decision intuitively he was very strong there but you know you gotta count the pips in those situations I mean what if he had been 11 pips down instead of one pip down then he could or instead of one pip up you know then uh, he would have made a huge blunder so you better have strong intuition <laughs> in that case as well if you don't want to count the race Okay. A little bit of Danish chit chat over the board with the former world champion Peter Halberg discussing how much he his total prize winnings have been. He says his He's, even though he won the world championship, <laughs> he's still not really significantly up because he's played tournaments for many years. And, uh, yeah. Double four, that's a huge roll, but I'm a big underdog here, down to 21% winning chances. But I, I stay in the race, I'm in the hunt. Let's see, I need some big doubles. That's also pretty good. Still not completely out. Okay, 6-3, that's a strong roll from Sinat. So as you can see, I am trying to take the match quite seriously. I'm using all my effort to try to figure out what the best moves are. Um, and it's also fun to play against Senat actually, because he's a good player, but he's not a professional level player. So you kind of... It, it's Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of different. Slightly more casual somehow. But really nice. A lot of fun to play play against Zenat. I hope we get to get a rematch. We even had some money games as well after our matches here. <laughs> because Zenat, according to him, uh, he's a money game player, not a match player. Uh, which... One split. Three one, great roll. Six four. As we can see, you know he he finds the the right moves uh, very often and he finds them very fast. Six four is also a good running roll, but uh, for me here. But given that I can put him on the bar, that's the best play to just make the deuce point. He rolls a great three two to anchor up, and I roll a great double three. 
so how do I play it? I guess I do this and don't leave any shots. Yeah, that's the best play, but it's almost a draw. Instagram tag. Remember to follow on Instagram. We should have put in Sinat's Instagram tag as well. Uh, I'm a little bit sad about that, but nevertheless, you can find him. Just search Sinat Gashi on Instagram. And he has a verified profile with millions of followers, so rather easy to find. 5-3. Uh -huh, the 6 here is a bit awkward. Yeah, that's the right play. I'm a little bit surprised that splitting the anger there is actually a contender. Almost the best play. For 1, that's a good roll and a good play. Five, three. So how will I play this? Yeah, that's the best. That is the best. Sinet is missing a borderline cube here. Not really a mistake, but he should be thinking about doubling very aggressively, like he did last roll last game. It could be his uh, match play inexperience showing a bit with the cube strategy that he's more of a money game player. Five. Oh, that's an illegal play. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm thinking about cubing. Of course, I'm not going to double. I'm up 5 2 to 7. That would be crazy to double here. I would basically be doubling to four. Uh, I instantly caught that illegal move. It when you have a lot of experience, the moves are just... It's hard to explain. You don't really think about them. They just come automatically to your brain. And any kind of illegality is usually detected immediately. And unconsciously. Which is fun how the brain works. Uh -huh. I could hit, but it looks a bit big to leave a double shot from the bar. This looks like the right play. Yeah. There's the cube. Okay. I'm up in the match. Yeah, it's a huge take because of all the I have contact value with the anger on the 21 point and I still have a forward game here. I could still hit him in one way or the other. So I have two game plans. <laughs> An old friend of mine just walked past the board. Um, so I know this is a take for money, but the score is really scaring me here. It's scary. I'm two away, five away. So I know I should be scared. I should be very careful in a gammonish position. But the thing is, this is not too gammonish. Look, I'm only losing 13.6% gammons according to Extreme Gammon. I don't remember if I took or passed. I <laughs> oh, good take. Oh, wow. Good. <laughs> That's a great, great take. I was a little bit scared there that I, my past tense self might have made a big blunder there, but blunder dodged. Oh. oh. <laughs> Again, you know, it's just immediately reacting to an illegal play. Ah, okay. Uh, what's that? I think he just made an illegal play. Yeah, it wasn't 6 4. And the transcriber put it in as a 6 4, but it wasn't, it was a 6 5. That was a small mistake in the transcription, but it wasn't. It was still a mistake what he did, because he was supposed to run all the way with 6 5. So I guess that it didn't really matter too much. 
Look at this double five. This is why it was a take. I have a strong forward game still. Oh wow, so many decisions here. This is a tough one. Let's see how I solve that one. That looks natural. That looks like a natural play to just hit loose. Yeah, it is the best play. But look at the second best play to point shift and jump out. Because I'm going to be up in the race now. I'm going to be up three pips if I point shift and jump out. No, if you come out, then you get a point shift. You Here you allow your opponent to roll a six and escape your prime. That's not so good. Now I'm counting the race. Counting in Danish. I think I'm miscounting the pips by two there. <laughs> I just said in Danish I'm gonna be up four pips, and that's not true, I'm gonna be up two pips. So I got two pips wrong, but that shouldn't really influence the decision. This looks like such a natural play. Good play. I think it's because I'm aware that I'm playing gammon safe here. I don't want to lose a gammon. Oh, I made an illegal play. I played 13 to 8 with a 5. Oh, I'm so sorry saying that. It's when you have a tough play like this, a double, and you move checkers back and forth. I'm really sorry about that. That gave me a slight advantage. That was not on purpose, guys. That was just a mess up. Okay, he survives. He still has a small chance here. Hadn't he rolled an ace there, it would have been very difficult. But rolling the ace... Oh wow, look at this roll, 6-4. Again, he really needs to come in immediately, otherwise it's looking, looking really bad here. I think I'm gonna go for the ace point here. No? Okay, it's close. It's very close between the top two plays, as we can see from Extreme Gammon. choose the outside hit. That's a good play. So past tense mark did better than present tense mark. 5-3 I need to come out. Yeah, that's right. And then the question is whether you stay slotted or not. It's very close. It's very close. But again in gammon save mode I'm leaning towards this play. But wow I find that play. That's pretty cool. It's borderline, basically. Wow, 6-1 from the bar. Oh yeah, he's on the bar even. The 6-1 actually gave him... Wow, I fan. Now he's in, not in a bad spot here. He can pick up those blots. He can make a blitz attack. Now he has a tough choice. How do you play this one? Oh, really? Is that... No, that's not good. He needs to. The best place actually cover with seven to one and then hit loose with eight to four to put two checkers on the bar. That was a weak play that he played there. So now I should be good coming in with both. Six three. He's gonna come out with a six. That's for sure. The PR is now up to twelve for Sinat, slightly higher here, and I'm just below two. So I'm obviously happy with that performance so far. <laughs> I think he has to come out. Yeah, he realizes that. Good play. Very strong play from Sinat. He realizes that it's no good to to play the six on his own side of the board. That's a powerful roll. Yeah, picking up that second pot. Sending it back behind my five prime. Now all I have to do is roll a five or six and leap out. Oh That's nasty. That is nasty. <laughs> I'm agonizing. That's the best play. Good play. I found the best play. The only play that wasn't a blunder. And now all of a sudden it's actually... Yes, I want, he could be a favorite here actually. Now I think he's a favorite after a fan. I do have the stronger inner board though. Yeah, okay.
Okay. Come on. 6-3, that's a great shot. I don't get to crunch. I'm a 55% favorite here. I have more men behind his prime than he has behind mine. And he actually has a solid 4 prime. Yeah, I'm coming out. That looks about right. Good play. I'm actually surprised that anything else is in the blunder territory. 5-3. I need to come out, I think. This looks right. Yeah, just get out full control. Apparently the Extreme Gamma likes 12 to 9 a little bit more. I think I like my play. Just maximizing outfield control. Oh, that's not good. No. Okay, it's not too bad actually. I thought that was a blunder. Just my quick instinct told me that that was a blunder, but it wasn't. It was just a 28 mistake from Senat. So no big deal. With a 6 there, I didn't like the... I would have come out and trying to fight for freedom with the back checkers and fight for contact. It's not good to get stuck on the ace point like he is now. So I made a small mistake with double three. I'm not sure how I should have played it then. 5-1, that's annoying. He should actually leave a shot here. 2-1 to one is the best ace. It just makes sense. No, that's no good. I don't think that's really a contender. Yeah, it turns out that it's a blunder. He buried one extra checker than he than he had to, so he could have just had one dead checker, not two dead checkers. And now he's in a bad shape. He needs to get really lucky here. He basically needs to roll double sixes. Now I finally have him trapped behind my prime here, my beautiful five prime. And if I can just keep him there. The moment I st wow six four the fly Hello. shot. You have a feeling? <laughs> yeah, I had the feeling. Uh, I just need to enter immediately. Then I'm I'm a seventy three percent favorite here, but that's okay. So I enter, but the four, the four is not optimal. So both fours here are good. That's fine. But of course, over the board, I don't know how close these two plays are. I've actually spent quite a lot, a lot of time on my time bank here. Okay, that's fine. I do leave an extra shot, but I get an extra attacker. Six three. That's another. T t what do you call it? Another amazing roll. <laughs> I think I was about to to use a wrong adjective there. I was about to say that's a terrific roll. I guess you can say a terrific roll. English is not 100%. And there I fan, and now he rolls the 5 1. Okay, he can't cover. But he can pick and pass. He can pick and pass. Okay, so he chooses the safe play, which is actually fine. It's fine. The slightly more aggressive gammon go move would be to hit me and. and pick up the, the blood with 6 to 1. Okay, so I'm in here, but. He's up in the race, 26 pips. I have a lot of contact value though. It's not going to be easy for him to bring his checkers home. That helps a bit. That helps a lot actually. Now I could get into trouble. Okay, this one is tricky. This is an end game contact position. Sometimes I like to call it a hypergammon position because the game is essentially played with just a few checkers for both sides here. So my, it's a tactical position because it's it's very mathematical. Basically, I'm trying to hit a shot, but I don't like to, I don't like to uh, bury checkers here. But I don't have to bury checkers, so I can either run all the way, or I could cover with six to one. But then I have to leave an an annoying shot. We lost the camera feed, but um, I'm sure I'm agonizing here because this is tactical. This would make sense. This would make sense, but as we can see, it's actually a blunder to play this play. This is also a blunder. Also a blunder. 
here we have like a one man holding game getting contact but I'm so far down in the race that I really need to I really need to hit a checker here yeah, I'm agonizing that's actually no that's the second best play that's the second best play so you want to cover with the five and apparently 19 to 15 is the best play that's a tough one to find I'm running through all the the rolls here okay I mean I didn't commit a blunder here I can understand why I made this play I'm not too sad about that play even though it was a mistake that was a very tough one to find 19 to 15 Now it's just a race. My luck is over. Yeah, it's looking good for CNET. He's gonna come back to a three away, two away match score here. He's gonna get to 5 4. Yeah, it's just, I'm saving the gammon obviously, but down to 1%. winning chances here. Yeah, I we don't have the PRs uh, because we don't have the summary tap activated here, but I guess Sinat's PR is probably a little bit below 12 again now, maybe below 10. And I guess my PR just went slightly up with that very difficult 5-4 end game contact position but I should still be in the low twos otherwise I wonder if we get that camera feed back or if it's just lost for the rest of the game Two point fifteen versus ten point forty nine. Okay, so it's actually pretty pretty solid from both sides here. Um of course I'm happy playing in the low twos and uh I think Senat can be pretty pr proud as well playing ten and a half in a live match. And this is by the way in the summer of two thousand and twenty one. So we're coming off of more than a year of COVID. So everybody has been playing online but not so much live. Uh, we don't have the pip count here, so Senat is playing really well, I think. Uh, he should duplicate the fours here, playing 13 to, to 9, because I want to make the 20 point with the 4. Oh, that's a fancy little roll, 2-1 there, I can double hit, it's a tiger play. Very strong maneuver, and he rolls a 1-6, one of his worst rolls. Now I'm in an advantageous position here, 57.5% favorite with 18% gammons. Um, had the score been reversed, this would have been double. But I'm up, I'm up 5-4 to 7, so I'm two away, which means I could just win an undoubled gammon here and not risk. Okay, that's a little bit too aggressive apparently. Apparently the computer wanted to play safe there with a pick and pass. Interesting. That's a nasty... Uh, no, sorry. That was the 5-2 before my 3-2. I, I didn't even see that Senat made a blunder. He played 8-6, to six, stripping his 8 points, stacking his 6 points. That's never correct. So it's anything else than that would have been better, I think. And here I have a little micro decision with an ace. Both aces are good and I choose the slightly superior one, just make some structure rather than hitting loose. 6-4 is a great shot, I think you should just anchor up. Just anchor up, yeah, and leave a triple shot, nope. Just anchor up, you need the anchors in it. If you don't anchor up, I can extend my prime and I can even initiate a blitz attack by winning the fight of the, f of the five point. So that's a, yeah, that's a blunder because he fails to anchor up. The anchor is just so powerful, but I guess it was just too mind blowing for Sinat to leave a triple shot on his side of the board, but that's what he had to do. The anchor on the 20 point is the golden point. So when you can make the golden point, usually it's almost always correct to do so. Um, 
I'm just stopping and thinking here. I'm sure that I'm not going to double this position. I need very high winning chances uh, to double two away, three away. I need to be close to 75% favorite. And as long as I have some gammons in the position, it's usually better to just keep rolling and try to win an undoubled gammon. Uh, he could tempo hit it. That's that's not a good play. That is a nasty play. That that I think that's the worst play I've seen Sinat make with 13 to 6. Um, he made many good plays. I'm a little bit surprised actually because he's making a super stack. He's playing safe while he's getting primed and he could have made a tempo hit which takes away half my roll so I wouldn't have developed my prime structure like I'm doing now. Okay, double aces, that's lucky because at least he gets to develop something. He has to split the back checkers here so th he doesn't get trapped behind a prime in an ace point game. That's not good. Uh, he's losing concentration. He's making big blunders. He's, I think he's losing concentration here. That's another thing when you're at a when you're playing at the highest level and competing at the highest level in backgammon. You cannot lose concentration. It's so important. You need to stay focused. You need to be aware of your strategy. And you need to see all the tactical details of the position. Oh, by the way, I made a blunder with 6-2 earlier. I, I don't even... I failed to see that. Oh, double four. What a tremendous roll. That's amazing. I make the prime here. I wonder what my mistake was with the 6-2. I, I mean, probably you guys watching the video noticed what I did wrong, but sometimes you miss details uh, when you're doing commentary. <laughs> and I failed to see. Maybe I should have run with, with this with the 6-4 rather than build the 4-point. I don't know. Okay, so that's the only play that covers up both lots, so I guess that's the right play. And uh, that 6-5 Cena just had was a huge roll. That's what made him not getting primed. Oh wow, look at this one, 6-1, that's also huge. So now I'm an 80% favorite. Wow, he hits right back with 5-2. <laughs> ah, we're playing for 200 euro in this match, not just 50. My memory was off. Uh huh. I'm stepping up as far as I can with my back checker because I'm up 44 pips. So I need to get that launch ready in a launch ready position, the back checkers. I'm not gonna stay back deep in his inner board and risk getting primed. That's why I stepped up with that 4-2. 6-1, that's not a good roll. He should be thinking about outfield control here. He should be thinking about outfield control. For that reason, 18 to 12 is the best 6. Why is he no, that's he doesn't really do anything with this roll. And he doesn't maximize his outfield control. So look if I roll a 5-2 now or any 6 and 5-2 is also fine. He's just he has a single shot rather than a triple shot. So that's the problem with the move he had. Look and now he misses the shot. That was a big swing actually. bit around here at, to be honest I lost my overview here I think there's a good chance that he's not gonna make a legal move here because maybe my past tense self has all his moves in memory but I'm confused looking at it now how the initial position was yeah he had a single shot 
This looks about right. Okay. So I had it under control. He's wanna run. He's actually just down two pips after this move, so it's not a horrible play, but he doesn't really have to run. He's not giving up too much race equity by just staying back. But the thing is... Um, oh, wait a minute. The pip count... I, I was wrong about the pip count. So apparently the transcriber already moved some of the sixes. So I, I don't know what the pip count is, but I can see that the equity is minus one point regardless of his move. And uh, his take point here is 25% because that, that's what he has if he drops the cube. 3 away, 1 away Crawford. You have 25% there because you need to win two games in a row. The post Crawford game is going to be played for two points because he's going to double immediately. Uh, so if I double here, I'm doubling for the match. And he needs 25% in the position in order to take. Counting the pips, I'm up 14, I said. That's right, at least I counted the pips right this time. So I'm cubing, that's a great cube, very, very good cube. I realize that I'm probably more than a 75% favorite here with 14 pips. He has very little contact value. And his inner board is not too strong either, so even if he gets lucky and hits a fly shot in the upcoming sequence, he can't really capitalize on it with a high degree of certainty. Putting him in a tough spot here, you know, he could have 25% here, he's down 14 pips. <laughs> he asked his friend, gamble or no gamble? You need to count the pips in it. But I guess he has his own intuitive ways of trying to estimate whether he should take or not. I'm, I would be surprised if he knew that his take point was 25%. I don't think he's a mathematical player like this who studied the match score theory. But he's definitely an experienced player with a good intuitive feel. A lot of players probably would have taken this cube actually. Oh, he almost took it there. Is he gonna take it? It's a 369 blunder. Take the, he drops. Good decision. Yeah, Very close. Very difficult. Yeah, over the board that was a difficult decision because we saw here with Extreme Gammon that his winning chances were 20%. But I mean, accurately. You take it? I don't know what was the race. 14 pips. 14 pips? Yeah, I was ahead 14 pips. A little bit. But not much. But he also has the blocks in there. Thijs Rasmussen so on the right. The from the fly shot Peter Halper. He still has two blocks in the middle. I'm actually leaning. I'm actually leaning towards the pass as well. Even though you say thousand pips is a game. Game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you need 25 percent to take it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So Peter Halberg yeah. is leading, leading towards uh, the take. Really yeah. He thinks it's close. Yeah. Over the board, I. Over the board, that was a tough decision, actually. Um, but I think uh, I think I figured it out. I even said out loud there that I was leaning towards the pass. Uh, yeah, I think I understood that position well. Wow, what a horrible roll from Sinat. He misplaced it. He didn't have to put the second checker up, uh, or the fourth checker up on the three point. And now I'm just trying to trap him behind a prime. That's my game plan here. I don't need to split. He actually has some blitz potential. 11 checkers in the zone with the stack. So I'm just trying to play him. That's my game plan. Just don't split the back checkers and trap him behind a pure prime. Yeah, six threes. That's a good roll. Exactly. He's trying to fight for freedom. He still has good racing chances here. Six three is a bit weird. That's the three. Now I got the five prime. So I just said that I didn't want to split my back checkers, but I don't really have a choice here. Playing eight to two is very weak. You don't want to put your checker down on the two point here. Let's see what he comes up with. So he doesn't have a prime position because of the inefficiency and impurity 
of his front position. He actually has a blitzing position. So he should make a play like this. That's a great play. That's right. When you don't have a prime position and you have a blitz position or blitz formation, you need to make blitzing plays and running plays. Not priming plays. So that was a good play by Sinat. The three can be played in three different ways, actually. And it's very close. It's one of those little decisions that you don't really know that it's close over the board. <laughs> so you're still trying to use your best backgammon skills to find the best move. Okay, that's fine kind of stepping up with uh, my back checker there on the other side of his stack on the th on his three point double sixes that's a fan uh, no he shouldn't I was just about to think whether he should double or not but he's <laughs> got two checkers behind my five prime so he shouldn't you want to be aggressive. Is that a good move? It could be. No, it's not the best, but it's not a horrible move. Uh, it, it is. No, it's not. It's not a blunder. So it's okay. His double one. That's a good one. And then out with a six. That's a great shot. Exactly. It's a. Here he shows that he really has a good intuitive understanding about the game because a beginner would not hit loose there on the four point. But he realizes that how powerful it is to win the the battle of the four point here to trap me behind a prime and put two checkers on the bar. No, that's not good. You want to use your deuce to play 24-22. So you see daylight with that back checker. That was a mistake. That was not a good move. It's not a blunder though. It does have merits to double hit, right? But oh look at this perfecta. There we go, two one. Cover and and step up. This is the Crawford game, so the cube is not in play. And next game is going to be post Crawford game. And since the post Crawford game is going to be played for two points, oh, by the way, Instagram tag. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Mark Olson10, and Bagamon Galaxy as well. Bagamon Galaxy on Instagram. Um, what were we talking about? Ah, yeah, the post Crawford games are always going to play, be played for two points because he doubles immediately. Which means that whether he wins one or two point here, he's going to be one point, one game away from winning. So I don't care about losing a gamma here. I should just try to maximize my winning chances with my checker play moves. Is that a double six? Wow. Wow. Four four. <laughs> my last chance. Last hope. So he does give me the double four. Nope, wrong eight. Five two, should he still give me the double four? No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't give me the double four. Also because he doesn't care about winning a gamma either. It doesn't matter, he doesn't need to maximize. That's the play. Good play, Senat. He doesn't need... Oh, that's a single four, uh-huh. The casual throwdown of a checker. Just throw it in position. A bit nonchalant. Okay. Again, I don't care about losing a gammon, so I'm not too emotionally attached here to rolling a four. Senate is in the bear off, that's a comfortable roll. So I can. I'm winning 6.1% of these games. Okay, now it's slightly <laughs> less. Ah, uh, double sixes. Again, if I was trying to save a gammon, I would definitely run with one of the back checkers. But given that I don't care, uh, this was a slightly inferior move. Actually, I could have slotted this. I think I I moved the checkers in the wrong order. If I had uh, 
Yeah, I moved them sub optimally, but now I get a chance. But I failed to hit 6-3. It's not looking good. It looks like we're heading off to essentially a double match point. Oh wow, I get another shot. <laughs> Sina takes a deep breath. I make the hit! I'm alive. The miracle hit. I'm thinking about slotting, but it's is an overplay. Good play. Just maximize outfield control. Oh, three six would have been the nuts. One six, not so much. Two point five PR versus twelve point seven. Oh, look at this! Wow, now I'm a fifty-eight percent favorite to win this this game. I was basically dead. I think I was below one percent winning chance in this game. Now I'm in the leading spot all of a sudden. I can't really see well how many checkers he's got stacked, but okay, I think he has six checkers out. Or is it? Or is it seven? No, it's got to be seven checkers out because I'm a 58% favorite here. Because if he had eight checkers out, it would be 50-50, and one checker is approximately eight per seven eight percent. So, yeah, it makes sense. He has seven checkers out here. I need to be as aggressive as I possibly can in this bear off here. And 5 4 is kind of an awkward number. Okay, I'm just pressing his clock here. No need to. Oh, double sixes. It's a great shot as long as I don't get hit. Oh, wow, a fan. Yeah. Let's see, double three, wow, what a tremendous roll. Now I'm a huge favorite. It, look, it looks like it's game over for Sayad here. He f uh, I rolled the 3-1, which lost the roll, but it sh I should be good. I should be in a good shape. It looks like it game. it's game over for Sayad here, yeah, it is. What a pleasure it was to play against uh, the Kashin Gun. I'm looking forward to following his boxing career as well. He, he's had some huge fights already. He has multiple international championship titles. Cool guy, cool match. Thanks for watching, guys. Do we have time for one more? Thanks for watching this video. Did you smash that like button? Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to not miss out on future videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and my personal Instagram, Margolson10. And see you in the next video.